So just before we actually start, just a little bit about how the session works. Everybody's on mute. Um, if we were to, to leave everybody's microphone on, then nobody would be able to hear anybody else. So uh, everybody's muted. If you do have any questions, there is a question panel on the side of your screen that you can go into and just type a question. So if you wouldn't mind if, if somebody um, could just fire something in there just to make sure that works and it comes through okay. Um, I'm sure it works, but I just want to check where I have it positioned on the screen that, yeah, there we go. All sorted. Okay, so there's some questions already. Fantastic. One of them, am I in Scotland? What gives that away? I'm shocked. This is my best English accent. So, uh, yes, in sunny Scotland until today. Yesterday for the past 10 days, very sunny. No, not so much. So, um, questions obviously work. That's perfect. I've got that sorted on screen. So, if you have any questions as we're going through things, um, find them into the question area. There's a couple of polls that I'll, I'll pop up as we're actually running the session, but we have a, a real quick PowerPoint and then it's into the software itself just to, to run through and show you how we can work in isolation. So, the theme of this session is all about Celebrity Anywhere. That's our free uh, viewer for IFC models. And we're talking here about working in isolation. So that's a little, about, a little bit of tongue in cheek based on the, the current situation we all find ourselves in. But it's also about the, the two ways that we can use Celebrity Anywhere. So we can work in isolation, which means effectively you are given or you create your own IFC files and you work with them self-contained in Celebrity Anywhere. The other way, which we'll look at on Thursday session at the same time, is when we're collaborating with others. So that is predominantly starting from an existing Celebrity model and then working on that and collaborating with others with it. A little bit of collaboration here at the end of the session, but effectively we're looking at it from a, a self-contained point of view. So let me just jump to the next slide. There is, if you've been watching Twitter, I have an extensive PowerPoint of five slides today. So there's 20% done. And here comes the next one. So this is the brief agenda. Uh, I'm Ken Good. So I should probably have pointed that out already. But uh, if you haven't already guessed, I'm running through the session from sunny Scotland. I should have put in the poll where everybody is. That would have been interesting. Um, but... Effectively, I'm going to take a quick look at the, the product family, the lineup, just so you can see the position of Celebrity Anywhere. Um, then what we're going to do is go through the process of just starting from scratch. We open a model, we run around the model. As part of that process, we'll look at it visually from different aspects that will help us identify any issues along the the process of doing that. We'll look at how we annotate those issues and mark them up so that they're visible for others. We'll get those recorded and then we can look at how they can be communicated to others um, before moving on to the, the final bit, which is looking at the, the next steps. So that is the uh, the first part of the PowerPoint. Only other slide before we get into the software is just this family lineup. So the Celebri product family consists of these four products. Today we're going to be looking at Celebri Anywhere, but we also have Celebri Site. Let me switch on my little red laser. Yay, there it is. So we're going to be looking at anywhere. We'll come back to that in a second. We also have these other products. So Celebri Site uh, adds a few more functions on top. Celebri Office is the, the main product that does all of the, the checking and the, the customization of the, uh, the rule sets and all the other back office content. And then we have the enterprise product, which is all to do with the, the scalability um, for larger corporate global clients. Coming back to Celebrity Anywhere, what we're looking at today is, as I've already said, we're going through these various parts of the, the process here. The one bit we can't look at actually is classifications because we're working in a in isolation effectively. Um, we will look at those on Thursday because we can use those from existing models. So we'll come back to that one on Thursday. But effectively, this is the, the part of the product family that we will be looking at today. So let me just jump out now to my doc, which 
is here and we'll just launch Celebri. So I haven't started yet. We're just going from startup. Naturally, it's on my other screen. Here we go. So because I'm working in isolation in Celebri Anywhere, uh, what we can actually do, the, the first time you run here, you can pick Celebri Anywhere. And if you only use Anywhere, if you don't use any of the other members of the product family, so if you don't have licenses for site or for office, then what you can do is pick this box to remember next time. And then when it starts, it just goes straight to Celebri Anywhere. Because I have to use all the products and constantly switch between them, I don't use this remember next time option. So I'm going to leave it unticked. So let's just continue into the software. And what we have here is Celebri pretty much as it comes out of the box. I've done a couple of little tweaks. I've switched on compact layouts. So I've reduced the size of this layout bar and reduced the size of some of the spacing between the text and the views. But effectively, everything else is, is pretty much as it comes out of the box. So the Anywhere product, um, <clears throat> what we can do with it is open up any um, IFC models. There are a couple of other formats we support as well. We can bring in PDFs and we can actually bring in DWGs. You will see that in the dialog boxes, but the reality is nobody really uses them because there's a great deal of work has to go into the DWG to make it into something that we can then work with and celebrate in terms of the, the data and the, the way that it's actually pieced together. So although you'll see that there, we're not actually going to go and look at it. So straight out of the box, when we come into Celebrate, <clears throat> what we see is this uh, recent area. So these are our recent models, our recent model places. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Quick drink of coffee before I have no voice. Um, so yeah, this is the recent area that shows the, the recent files or the, the examples um, that we've been working with so far. There's other options here as we can go through. There are some videos I'll show you, um, or I'll show you a link towards the end where you can find those videos that will allow you to go through and explore that in more detail. So today is literally what we do to just get started. So if I just choose open, that takes me out to the file system. And in here, you can see the various formats that we can work with. So I already mentioned um, we have IFC, SMC, um, there's some of the older formats, um, and there's also PDF. And I was actually wrong. There is no DWG in Celebrity anywhere. That's only in the Office product. So apologies. I, I, because I'm jumping between all three, I struggle to remember what goes where. So IFC is the main format we work with. That's the main thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pick straight away. I want to federate my own model. And I've already got an architectural model, a ventilation model. And let's give me the structural model as well. So we grab all three, open them up. It does its processing, and as it's processing, it pops up this little dialog here that gives us the option to set short names. So the first model is my ventilation model. Let's just rename that with a short name of VNT. The next one is the architectural model, ARC. And then this one here is our structural model. So we'll just give it STR. In terms of discipline, Discipline is a, a really uh, basic filter that's used to um, organize models of different types. Um, we use it a great deal in the office product and in the site product to um, sort the, the information takeoffs, to sort the classifications, and to sort the rule sets. And although you may not be working with that here, it's good discipline to come in and set the discipline. And it means that if you were to transfer this SMC model that you're ultimately going to create, if you were to transfer that to one of the uh, the licensed products, then whoever picks it up is already in a good place to start because this has all been set in the first place. There are also options to add categories. I'm not going to go into that process just now. That's if we want to group lots and lots of files together. But I'll just OK that for now. And effectively, that is me now inside my model. So we can spin around, we can zoom in, we can zoom out. I'm doing all of this from a regular old three button wheel mouse. Um, so straight from the wheel, we're able to pan, zoom, 
uh, a get around the model. Spin is done with a left mouse click because the default navigation mode up here is already set for spin. So there's not a lot actually to do there. It just straight out of the box, off we go. <clears throat> However, one of the first things we need to do is, is what we call ourselves uh, as Celebrity UK, uh, what we call a rogue component check. So what that effectively means is we're going to do a quick look at the top view. So I've switched off perspective, so I'm looking at a plan. We zoom extents, and what we expect to see is footprint of the building. What we don't want to see is something like that, where there's a little tiny speck of a building up here, and then there's some other random dot away down in the bottom corner somewhere else. So we'll try and avoid that one. So come back, zoom extents again. We should then repeat that for the top, the front, the left, the right, the back, whatever it is you want to do. I won't go through all of that process. We'll just switch back to here. So just before I get too much further into this, I'm going to fire up a poll. I just want to get an idea of, of um, what if you guys are already using the software. So let me just stick that on screen for now. So I'll put that up and we'll give that 30 seconds just to give you time to um, submit your answers. So give it another 10 seconds. Okay, right. So let's close that off and let's have a look at the results. So actually, there's a fairly obvious split that there's nobody using Salibri site, um, but we do have just slightly more than half already using Salibri Office. Um, so for you, Guys using Celebrity Office, actually, I would recommend Thursday's session because in Thursday's session, I'm going to be looking at how Celebrity Anywhere can be used in conjunction with a model that has already started in Celebrity Office. This here will give you the opposite workflow where we can start the model in Celebrity Anywhere, we can federate it, we can do some visual manual checks, and then we can push it into Office. But as I say, on Thursday, we'll be going the opposite way, which is where we start from the, the model that's already been completed in Office and has come back into anywhere. So let's uh, close that down just now and we shall carry on. Um, prepare for the next one. So back in Celebrity, um, we've done the, the quick check for rogue components. We do actually have an option, and this is one that we put like a big asterisk and a big star that should only be done if you absolutely have to do it. But one of the things that you'll sometimes see is when you look around the model, you might see the ventilation model sticks out the top of the architectural model or the structures model slightly offset in the background or whatever it happens to be. We do actually have the option to... Um, uh, no, we don't. I looked at this yesterday. <laughs> I give up. Um, we don't have the option in here to move the model, so um, I'm confusing myself now. Um, so in the commercial product, there is the option to move the model if you absolutely have to do it. In Celebrity Anywhere, if you bring your models together and they're not aligned, then the only option you have at that point is to go back to whoever created the model and ask them to make the changes for you in the first place, which is, is where this next poll comes on from. So another quick question is just a, a simple one. So the IFC models that you bring into your Celebrity, are those ones that you create yourself? Do you author them in-house and then push them into Celebrity or are they passed to you from somebody else? So I'll give this 30 seconds and then we'll shift on. Okay, five seconds. 
Last chance. Anybody else? Three, two, one. Close. Right. So that again is fairly decisive. So most people are working with models other people have provided. Um, but nearly a third of you are actually creating your own models and pushing them into Celebri anywhere. So that's or pushing them into Celebri. So that's that's good to know. Um, <clears throat> let's just hide those results again. So <clears throat> in essence, then for those 69% of you that have the models created from elsewhere, if you get to this point and realise the models are not aligned, then you really need to go back to whoever created those models and explain what the problem is in order to get that fixed. So we'll uh, um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just taking that off. So uh, once we've done that and assuming the models are in the correct place, we can then start to just have a wander around the building. So anywhere is really all about manual checking and it's just a, a case of visually coming around the building and starting to see if there's any issues we can spot. So in this case here, because we have the structural model and the architectural model together, we can actually identify an issue here. So we have structural walls, we have architectural walls, we have all sorts of different things going on here. So one of the things we're going to do is use what's called the selection basket to visually compare the different models that are in here. So one of the things that does is if we use the model tree, so the model tree is our, our view that shows um, the structure of the, the model as it stands at the moment. So we see them from their, their host file names. So the architectural model, the structural model, the ventilation model. And at the top of the model tree, we have these three little buttons that give us access to the selection basket and allow us to set things to the selection basket. So in this case, I've now set the structural model to the selection basket, which means only the structural model is visible. So we can look around it, and one of the areas to pay attention to is this area here. If I then switch to the architectural model, set that one, then what we can see is that we have a dirty big window up at the top here. Spaces are visible, which gives it this green and yellow tint, but if I just do Alt S, that quickly turns them off. So this is the pure architectural model now. So we see what would be the curtain wall system. We see um, a few other bits and pieces in here that are not really necessary for the structures. So if I switch between those two, we can quite easily identify that there's an issue in there. And if I select both and set them both, then actually, if I turn off spaces again, we can see quite clearly that we have a dirty big bit of structural wall in the middle of our window, as it happens to do here. So what we can do, um, is start to record these issues. And where we do those sort of things is actually in the tab or the, the layout that's called communication. So because we're working in isolation, the checking layout and the information takeoff layout, there's no actual functions in there that we can really make use of in this session. So what I'm going to do is go to communication and it's in here that we can start to record these issues as we come up against them. So I'm going to create a new presentation and maybe we call it um, visual check. Um, and it's, where are we? 28th of April. 28th of April. And give it some sort of prefix stick Ken on the front of it. And this is just a new presentation. I'm not creating from a BCF file that's going to bring in from elsewhere. That's something else we'll look at next time. So, okay, that one. And what that does is, as I create the presentation, it captures what's on screen. Now, I'm going to do a quick shuffle here. So, I'm going to put my issues down there. And I'm going to put my issue sorter up into this space here. Because what that does is give me a little bit more space to then work and see what information I've put down here. So I've just created this issue. I need to give it a title. Uh, because I'm running at reduced resolution here, I'm, I'm having to do a bit more shuffling than normal. So I need to give this a title. Um, so we can call this missing opening on ground first, second floor. And then we can give it a really complicated 
description. I don't know if anybody speaks my language, but that's clearly described the issue. Uh, we can see this is an issue. Is it open? Uh, is it an error? Is it for information? Is it unknown? Is it a warning? So depending on what we're going to be doing with our Celebrity model when we're finished, if we're going to communicate it with others, we can start to fill in these different bits and pieces. We need to know if we're going to use BCF, we need to know which version of BCF is going to be used because that determines which one of these fields we're going to use. But I'll keep it simple just now. This, I want to tag this as an architectural and a structural issue because it's the architect may have put the, the window where it shouldn't be or the structural engineer hasn't created the opening. So we need to determine what that is. As we created the issue, it's captured a snapshot. But that's not really very clear. It doesn't really highlight what we're we're talking about here. So what I can do is zoom in. And if I try and position that slightly differently, we're kind of at the mercy of the display here because we've got two surfaces together. So that's why we get this overlap. But what I can do is create another image. And if I scroll a little bit further, you'll see that I've now got that and that, that I can jump between to move between the two different views. If I want to make it even clearer, then what we can do is come up to our component handling tools and I can grab the markup tools. And then here we can do a nice big cloud, flower, whatever you want to call it, over the top of this window that's missing its opening. And we can even draw a dirty big arrow. We could put on some text. Always very professional and um, you know, clear and to the point. There we go. So we can do that sort of thing. And then I can either add a new image or what I can do is just update the existing one. So what we've now got is a snapshot that very clearly highlights the issue. And then we'll get this one here that gives the same uh, issue, but in a different context. So you've got the surrounding context of the remainder of the building beside it. So we can do all those sort of things. There's other options that we can do as well, where we can freehand sketch, we can draw lines and circles and arcs. We've also got options here we can put on component stamps. So what they allow me to do is go in and stick on some information about that particular component. So depending how it's configured, we've got the type, the name, the model it comes from, the discipline it is, and the good of the component. And that is actually probably the most important part down here because what we can actually do is if we use the select tool which is available from this pull down here so I press the shortcut which was number six but what I can do is grab the structural wall and then what I really want to do is grab not the architectural wall if we go to here what I want to do is grab those two windows so I've selected all three of those components. And if I just switch everything else to transparent so you can see what I've done, I've got the structural wall, I've got the two windows, and these right now are the entirety of the selection basket, except I did manage to, no, oh, I was in perspective, that was silly. Um, I've got more in there than I actually should have. So let's just go back to the structural wall and, and go from there. So I'll take the structural wall and if I go to components, we can actually tag that component to this issue. So that records the GUID and it actually means that if we were to take a report from here as BCF and push it into the authoring tool, which is ARCHICAD in this case, actually sorry ARCHICAD is the architectural model, but if we push it into the structural model, then within their software they can actually grab and select that particular structural wall very quickly to go and resolve the issue by creating an opening or whatever has to be done with it. So let's <clears throat> come back out of there. We'll put this back to normal. And what we'll do is we'll go back to model and then continue our wander around the building and see if there's any issues that we can report. So another way that we can actually find out if there's any issues in here is to maybe let's just go between the architectural and ventilation model. So our ventilation model is difficult to see because it's inside. So let's grab ventilation, grab architectural, set both of those. We'll turn off the spaces. And then what I'm going to do is come up to our navigation modes here. And we've just been working with spin, pan, 
because I've got the wheel on the mouse, we don't need to switch between them. But if you're working on a trackpad, um, back in the days when I traveled, like <laughs> only a few months ago, uh, if I was on a train, there's very little space for a mouse on a train. So we use one and two as shortcuts just to jump between the two of them there. But what I'm going to do is go for game mode. And game mode actually allows me to jump down here to the ground floor. And then we're going to go walk inside. Now you'll see as I get close to the door, it actually becomes transparent. And that means it's a door that I can actually then go and walk through. So we can step right inside. And what we can then do is just either go into the elevator, and you'll see it again, it goes transparent. We can wander around, we can go back outside. Let's come around to the other side. Whoops. I'm trying to follow on the, the second screen here and it's not going particularly well. Um, so we can walk in there if we need to. We can go up a floor. So what we could do in that case, if we just point towards the front door there, I've pressed escape to come out because I want to resize this view. We can zoom in in this area here. This actually allows us to see as I pan or as I zoom, we can see in the navigation map the names of the different spaces. And what I can actually do is pick on ground floor. Oops, selected something in the background, but if we pick ground floor, which doesn't seem to want to select for me, that's handy. Okay, ground floor doesn't want to select, but we can double click the different positions inside the building. So I can go back to the lobby. Um, did it this time. I think I need new batteries in the mouse. Um, I can move up to the first floor. And yeah, there's definitely something not right with the mouse. There we go. Second floor, we can move up. And actually, when I come up to the second floor, this was the reason I wanted to come up here. If any of you have... Uh, sort of any architectural or structural skills, you may notice there is a bit of an issue with this column and also this column here. And actually there's a whole bunch of other columns that run around the top of the building as well. None of them actually meet the roof that they're supposed to hold up, which is not really the conventional way of doing things. So <clears throat> what we can do is uh, report these issues and again, make sure that they are then resolved. So. Quickly, what I'm going to do is add a dimension, and I'm just going to go from the, the top center of that column just up onto the top surface, uh, sorry, the underside surface of the, the roof here, and we can see that there is a problem. There's a 450 mil discrepancy here, so from the top of there to the top of there is 450 mil shorter than what it should be. So this is another issue that I need to go to communication, and in here, what I'm going to do this time is create a new issue. And we just quickly go through the process. Not touch the roof. And again, I'll give that a detailed description. We can stick in the various details like, is this an error? Is it a warning? Probably should warn about that one. Uh, who's responsible? This time we'll put myself on it. Um, and what these are doing is starting to build up the responsibilities down here that as we create more and more of these, we're able to then filter either alphabetically or reverse alphabetically. And what we can then do is pick out the structural issues, report them off to whoever's going to resolve those issues, find the architectural issues, send them to the architectural team. And it's a way of filtering and just building up more useful information in here. So if we go back to model, we can carry on. Um, there are other options to walk around the rest of the building. We can just do regular old, um, if we go to two, which is a shortcut for spin, then we can actually just spin around. We can look down the corridor. And then there's actually another issue there that we can identify where that window disappears above the ceiling. So there's a slight issue there. So again, this is something else we can drop back down. 
we can go to communication and in fact we don't have to keep dropping in and out of communication what we could do is if we get that positioned properly spin around slightly get a little bit closer um, we can create the issue here something in there put on this time we'll just put myself on it so you'll see this list builds um, and shows whatever information is going on here the other way to actually organize this is just do it by modification date so if this is a file that you've started previously you can use a modification date to see either the most recent or the oldest items that are already in the list um, so carrying on around here we can then um, if we go down a floor Wow, there's certainly another issue that we've we've spotted on this particular floor. So if we zoom back from there, yeah, the ventilation duct, something not quite right in here. So again, this is another issue. So we grab this one and say ducts visible through the ceiling. Again, give it a description. This time we'll say it's an architectural issue, but it's also ventilation or MEP or whatever it is you want to call it. So we can stick those in there as well. Uh, sorry, I just spotted a, a question. There was a, what is the shortcut to turn off spaces? So it's one of these shortcuts. There's a whole bunch of things that we can use here. There's another tool I've got to look at and I'll, I'll show these as well. Um, but the shortcut is Alt S. That just quickly turns on and off spaces, which gives it the color or not. Spaces are the, from Revit, they are rooms in ARCHICAD, they're called zones, but they are the, the entities that describe the, the rooms, the spaces uh, within a particular building. So I'll come back out to this sort of view over here. So one last thing I'll do to take a look at in terms of how we visually move around and identify issues is using our sectioning tool. It's a really powerful tool that quickly allows us to, to chop through the building. And what I'll do is just Shift the view so we're looking down onto the model slightly and I'm going to go to sectioning and then what we can do is just a couple of ways but the, the simplest way is just click on a surface and that turns it into a section plane so what that has done is chop away everything between me and what I clicked on and I've then got the option to hold down shift and then just push pull and pull down through the building to whatever level I want to get to so down here we can see that I have section into the ventilation model that we just had a look at um, if we come across to the side click on this wall here we can then push that wall back through and I'm actually looking at the same area that I was in previously I was down this end of the corridor so from here what I might want to do is position that so that again we're, we're kind of looking along the line of the ceiling. I'm going to press T to turn off the section planes. And if we just pull that sideways, it should be pretty clear what we're, we're talking about. One of the tricks we can use is if I press five, which is the shortcut for info, then what we can do is pick one item and it highlights it in green and gives us the information about it. But what that does is highlight pretty clearly what we're, we're talking about here so we can see the, the green ceiling so what I can do is then tag this as an additional image onto that same issue and then we could put on here uh, in fact we could put it on this part here some sort of highlight in brackets it's the green ceiling that we're talking about so as we go through our different issues then in this note here it actually shows that on slide number two if I double click it's the green ceiling we're talking about so there's a whole variety of different things we can do there in addition to the sectioning what we can also do is quickly use this option here to go and switch things on and off so we could say in this case let's hide all of the windows there's only one partial bit of a window there just now but when I zoom out you'll see let's hide all of the doors and what we then get is a, a sort of planar unobstructed view down through the corridor so we just see the shapes uh, and the voids rather than worry about the detail of 
like the curtain wall system out the front here. We're now just looking at the, the plain openings in the wall. So there's there's a variety of ways we can look at it. The other thing we can do is if we just go back to model, I briefly talked about the model tree, but actually what we can do is drop down through these different levels here. And this is using the containment hierarchy, which means that all of the stories relate back to the model they came from. So what I can actually do is just say, select and set the section ba selection basket to be just the ground floor architectural model. So we do that and now we're able to see just the architectural ground floor. If I want, we could go into the ventilation model, drop down through the different levels, find the ground floor, and this time I could use the add to selection basket and now that's introduced as well. So if I do Alt S, that'll turn the spaces off, make it a little bit clearer. We could then also add in the first floor, we could add in the second floor, and we're able to see the different bits that make up the model. It would help if I um, turned off the sectioning. So let me, wow, right click, sectioning, and remove all section planes. There we go. So now we're able to see the rest of the model in place. So we can use the selection basket that way. We can also do things like if we go to this one here, which then shows the component hierarchy, I can then just say, well, just show me all the ducts in the model. So we could do that. We could say, show me all the walls. And these are all the walls. But of course, this is now a mix of architectural walls and structural walls. Once you get to know the model and the type names and how it's actually put together, you'll find out that these are all the structural walls. You'll then find that these are architectural walls. So that's all the external architectural walls. Um, these ones, I believe, are not the ones I thought they were. It must be this one here. One of these is the stair core. Third time lucky. Um, but what we can do is, is get around the model and see from different areas just exactly um, what's going on in there. So we can use a selection basket to go through this in different ways. We can also work by layer, which depending on the authoring tool, that's sometimes better or worse. Um, Revit doesn't have layers, so family names transfer across. Um, when we come to this last button here, this is just our federated floors. That means that even if we have a dozen different models, this now shows the content of the entire ground floor or the entire first floor or second floor or whatever it happens to be. So there's a variety of different ways in to, to do these things. So let's just put that back to the show all, which is the default visualization for everything in there. Um, there's a few other tools that I've not gone through, but we have things that we can hide, we can make things transparent. Um, they allow us to just present in different ways so that we get different um, views into the building to make it as useful as possible. Um, so there's another couple of questions there. Uh, so keyboard shortcuts, sorry, yeah. I didn't explain keyboard shortcuts, Mac and PC, the only differences really are the operating system. So control on Windows is pretty much the same as command on a Mac. For spaces, Alt S is the same on Mac or PC. There's no difference there. I'm using a Mac today. Uh, the only real difference on the, the way the, the thing operates, the way the software operates is the title bar at the very top is closes over here on Mac, so over here on Windows. Only other difference is when we come to info. So if I was to select a window, for example, this gives me all the information about it. So we can actually go through and read the identification, the location, the quantities, the materials. On Mac OS, you have a list that pops out at the side. On Windows, these are all tabs that stack up uh, on top of each other. So there's no real difference in there. Um, one thing to point out with this is that this information you can actually select. So if you wanted to know the, the good, for example, you wanted to report this to somebody and it's just this one window, then what you can do is select this field and you can just copy it. So I don't have anything to paste it into, but um, if I was to copy, I suppose I could paste it in there. You'll see the good transfers up there and then you can actually do a search based on that. Um, so there's a variety of different ways to do things. If you want to find the toilet, you can search for the WCs, and there they all are. So a load of different ways to do the same um, sort of thing, to just filter and get around the model to find what you're looking for. 
Um, so that pretty much covers the whole process of various different ways we can navigate, or navigate around the model and find issues. When it comes to communication, I've created four issues. If we need to report these to somebody else to go and fix these issues, then what we use is still the communication layout, but what we do is report. And then we can report it in a couple of different ways. We can report to BCF, and we support 1.2.1 formats. This is why it's important, I mentioned earlier on, that you know what version of BCF the other parties are using, because they each support slightly different features and functions. So if I use BCF2, for example, that is not going to take, I can't get to them just now, but there's the fields here for priority date and stage, I think it is. They're not supporting two, they're only supporting 2.1. And version one doesn't support multiple images on the, the snapshots that are associated to the uh, the issues that we're, we have identified. So we need to be careful of that. But if I just report everything to that format, I literally just hit save and we save that off to yeah, desktop will do for me. And that creates a BCF file. So let me jump back. I don't really have anything I can show you more with the BCF. That's um, <clears throat> something that we could perhaps have a look at on Thursday's session. The other formats for reports are plain old PDF and RTF, and they are pretty much just paper reports that give the overview of what's been done so far. So there's our PDF. So we get the overview. These are the models that are loaded, the dates, the timestamps, everything else. Who was signed in at the time? Who was the checker? And then what we get is a report with the, the title, the description, the image that's associated with it, the second image. And then there's further options. I've turned the quality of these down to low, which makes them a little bit fuzzy, but it's just to reduce the size of the, the file that's created. So we do have those options for output as well um, to be able to send these to other parties to work with. The other option we have is we can actually save this SMC file and push it to somebody who's using Salibri Office, and they could then start to run the automated checks, which is what they'll find in the communication and the information takeoff layouts. But as I say, right now, when we're working in isolation in Salibri Anywhere, those don't actually show anything. So that's a, a quick run through of what we can actually do in here. Let me just drop back to PowerPoint and just show the, the sort of almost final slide, which is just the, if you want to find out more, where you go and, uh, and what you do about it. So the first thing I would say is take a look at the, the Learn page on Celebrity.com, which should be open here. And in here, you can go and click through the, the various different tabs and things you can search. One of the first places to take a look at is just this main page. So we have the Celebrity Assist sessions in here. So this one here is all about the, the administration tasks. There is another one, which is the very first steps of installing and getting started. I'm guessing that most of you guys are already ahead of that stage, so you probably don't need to worry too much. But then there's other things like these get to grips training materials. So that's actually a playlist that's, that's out here, um, which is a whole bunch of different videos that I've done that go through each one of these different parts of the functions in much greater detail than, than we've had time to go through in this session here. Uh, there's also the main Celebri Inc. YouTube channel. There's a whole variety of different bits and pieces on there, the customer insights, the um, the more sort of technical bits and pieces. So there's plenty of places to look at, but the first point of call I would recommend is Celebri.com forward slash learn, um, which is just on the very top of the page anyway. So there's a lot of things you can find in there, but uh, effectively that is our run through of Celebri Anywhere and working with it in isolation with your own uh, or IFCs that have been provided by third parties. Um, thanks for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, what I'll do is I'll leave the session open for another 10 minutes or so uh, and can pick up on any questions that come up. There are some already here, so let me just get a look at them and see what's what. Um, so we talked about keyboard shortcuts. 
Um, okay, so there's a question about checking information takeoff not being available. The checking part of the, the software really is the, the commercial part that kicks in with Celebrity Office. Um, if we were to have a model that was received from somebody who had already done those checks, then we can use Celebrity Anywhere to review what's been done, the same with information takeoff, but inside the free product, we're not able to run those from scratch. So um, that's why they're not available in the, the Anywhere product here. So I'm going to just make this a bit wider so I can see the question. Um, okay, so what is the function of hyperlinks? So hyperlinks allow us to add hyperlinks onto components. So that's just a way of tagging on a link that might be to the, the manufacturer's detail, to an installation spec, to, to something like that. It's just a way of, of linking out to some sort of external hyperlink. Uh, is it possible to make an automatic check between architectural structure uh, walls if they fit together? Uh, yes, but not in Celebri anywhere. That is something that's done in Celebri Office. There would be different types of checks, but one of the, the basic checks we can do is something that says that, um, I can't quite remember the exact name of the rule, but it, it effectively checks that the structural model's encased by some sort of architectural covering. Uh, will this session be posted on YouTube? Yes, once the recording's done, uh, it takes a little bit of time to process, but that will be uploaded to YouTube and will be part of the link that's sent as a follow-up email to, to all of you. Um, okay. There's a question about reports. With regards to reports, is it possible to show the navigation map separate from pictures? It's very unclear. Uh, no, we can't show the navigation map separately. But if the navigation map is getting in the way of things, then you can just close it down and that leaves you with the full screen view to then capture. To turn it back on, we just switch it on and off with this second end button in the toolbar at the, the top of the screen here. So it's it's fairly easy to move it out of the way. Um, YouTube question we've done. Will you be doing any sessions on rule sets in the future? Maybe, maybe. Um, that is quite a, it is a massive topic. There are so many variations within rule sets, but we may look at doing some of the, the absolute basics of the things that you, you have to do to set things up to get right before you get into the nitty gritty of defining all of your rules and get into great detail on them. So possibly. Um, how does BCF communication work between two different slavery files which contain the same IFC? are only part of the others. Well, BCF is all based on, it's, it's an open standard. Uh, it's, BCF stands for BIM Collaboration Format. Um, if, if two different Celebri files contain the same IFC files, so the IFC files within the two separate Celebri models will have the same components and they'll have the same GUIDs. So the BCF will be able to recognize and pick up that you are referring to a revision A or a revision B or a revision C of the same entity. So it, BCF just manages that. There's, there's, there's no real work that you have to do. It's just something that happens. Um, is it possible to sync issues with a server? Yeah, I haven't actually gone into that, but built into the system, we do have our BCF connector. And what we can do is add a connection to one of these five different service providers, so BIM Collab, Trimble Connect, BIM Sync, BIM Track, and Econex. Um, you have to have an account with these providers. You have to have projects. You have to have uh, access to them. Um, and you have to have a fairly decent internet connection because there might be a lot of stuff on there to, to transfer backwards and forwards. So I don't do it live in these sessions. Uh, as you can see, I don't actually have any connections set up just now, but Yes, certainly we can do that sort of thing. It's not a problem. That is from the, the free products um, as well as all the commercial products. Uh, 
Uh, there's another question there. Are we doing anything in model compare function in the future? Maybe. <laughs> uh, one of the things that would be good is, is to get some feedback on the type of things that would be beneficial. The the whole Celebri Assist uh, theme of things came around partly in response to the, the coronavirus situation and suddenly everybody working from home and working remotely and and having to do new things and find their feet and all this sort of stuff. So um, we're still developing the, the plans for what's going to be coming next. We do have a an idea of what's coming um, probably later in May, uh, but we are open to suggestions. So if there are subjects or this content you think would be beneficial, then please do let us know. Um, there are follow-up emails that come out as part of this process. I would certainly recommend if any of you are working with Celebrity Office and you want to work with others using Celebrity Anywhere, then I would certainly recommend Thursday's session. It's the same time, same place, um, but in that case, what I'll be doing is picking up with an existing SMC model, which has already had the checking done, the information takeoffs have been processed, the classification is already in place, and it's, it's a lot more detail of what we can then actually do inside Celebrity Office. Uh, sorry, inside Celebrity Anywhere because it came from the Office product. Um, so if you don't have those details, I'm sure they'll be, again, part of the email that comes around. I did see there's somebody in New Zealand. What time is it in New Zealand? I used to work for a an Archicad, um, well, the Archicad partner in New Zealand. Uh, and depending on the time of year, you guys were either it was 11 hours or 13 hours ahead of the UK. So keeping track was a nightmare. 10 p.m. Ah, it's not too bad. Not too late for you. Um, is it possible to add external photos to an issue? Well, that would be really useful if we could do that, wouldn't it? There's one of the buttons I didn't show, actually. Um, so let's go back to communication and let's go find... Let's just find this one. So it's completely unrelated, but we'll go for the roof because that's a nice big flat surface. So one of the tools I showed you was the markup tool. And the markup has a couple of extra buttons that I didn't go into, but there's one of the, the get to grips videos is specifically on markup. So you can take a look there to find out more of what's going on. So there's two things we can do. We can either go and browse for an image and this could get interesting. Um, let's just go for the dog because every roof needs a spaniel. So there we go. We can stick a dog or a cat or anything else you want on the roof. You can move it around. You can line it up. Um, probably, I'm sure our corporate management would prefer that we were to do something like this, which is go for a, an end wall grab another image, put it on there because there should be one in here called, there we go, Celebri logo. Okay, that one. And then what we could do is actually take that and resize it and reposition it onto the end wall here. Now we're not actually permanently fixing it to the wall, but if we save this as a new issue, We need to give it a title. Uh, we'll just leave it as that. We won't bother with the rest of it. Um, then what we can do is we had another one there. So just very quickly, uh, if we were to do a, a show all, then that wipes out everything and puts it back to default. But if we come back and recall the image from here, so let's just switch switch back then you'll see the link the image comes back into place here the other thing we can do is uh, a fairly new thing that was can't remember if it was 9105 or 9106 um, but what we can do is use this button here and we can actually tag an image so that could be a photo from site we can actually tag that straight into the issue itself um, within the system so rather than link it on to something like that there so what I've done is I've replaced what was this image with this photograph or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of ways to do that. 
So and there's another question, could you add the images in an extra slide? Yes, just add a new issue and same process. So it would still use something in the background. So um, if I just take that as a default view, then you would add a new image, but then what you do is replace that static image with um, something else. Uh, um, it's going to be the dog again, I'm afraid. And there we go. It does, the image is restricted by the BCF format, so 16 by 9 format is not 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 supported the image is, is still tagged to it but the the display is is limited to the the old-fashioned sort of three before ratio um rather than the, the widescreen formats okay i think we'll wrap things up then so thank you very much for your time um if you do have any follow-up after this as i say there will be follow-up emails that you can get in contact and um you can drop us an email and get in touch that way if there's anything you need to to follow up but otherwise thanks again for your time and um maybe i'll see some of you on thursday to look at the the workflow coming from a an office to anywhere perspective but um thanks again for your time